I've actually come back from Afghanistan shattered. Um, I'm burnt out. I'm damaged. I'm as damaged as as I was when I came back from Rwanda after seeing many people massacred. The human tragedy of the refugee camps is beyond description. George Gittos is no stranger to war and conflict, but Afghanistan today is worse than many places he's seen. I've seen Bosnia after four years of war. Um, I've seen Somalia after similar droughts, but this place is just utterly destroyed. Through his paintings, writings, film and photography, George Gitto sees Afghanistan with an artist's eye. It's kind of like an alternative negative Disneyland, a sense of, of uh, someone on a donkey with traditional clothing and then uh, you've got a jet fighter plane <laughs> shooting overhead and, and laser-directed uh, rockets, you know, it's... It's unreal, it's surreal, it's probably more surreal than Disneyland. George Gittos is one of Australia's leading figurative painters. For the past two decades he's worked as an artist in areas usually the domain of journalists. What's different for me going to war zones is that my art is about compassion. A lot of the art of the past, like if you look at Baron von Droz, the great painter of Napoleon's victories, it's very much the heroic soldier. But in all contemporary warfare, it's the civilian population, it's the individuals, the, the normal human beings that are mashed by the machine. And I very rarely see armies confronting each other um, and soldiers fighting it off. It's usually the civilian casualties and they're the kinds of stories that I try to tell. He's left his home in Sydney to travel to Afghanistan twice before, in 1999 and 2000. Both times he worked on paintings associated with landmines. The devastation brought to Afghanistan by years of war provided powerful inspiration. I think the most moving moment for me as an artist and probably the painting that I love most of all my work is a painting I've called The Yellow Room. This painting portrays a boy who lost his father in the war and then stepped on a landmine while working with his brother. The brother was killed and uh, the boy was blown through the air and when he woke up he was in his mother's arms and the whole of the insides of his stomach had been blown away. The mother no longer had a son or a husband and she'd managed to keep this boy alive with you know, no stomach for six weeks. And there was a sense of his spirit hovering above his body. Um, and it was like the boy was looking to me, he was in terrible pain, the mother was nursing him, and he's saying, I can't go. And his mother's love was holding him there, her prayers, and yet his spirit was wanting to leave. And I felt I'd walked into a room where the doorway between life and death was wide open. George Gittos has just returned from his third trip to Afghanistan, the first since the US campaign began. This painting's called Disney World Afghanistan and it came out of me being in a camp generosity and finding these two old fighting dogs. Um, this one had been through too many fights, it was malnourished, it could barely stand up. But it reminded me of most of the population of Afghanistan. As I was drawing it, I turned around and there was this other really tough fighting dog, young and ready to tear my throat out if it hadn't been tethered. And it reminded me of all the young soldiers I saw everywhere from every side of what can be the next conflict in Afghanistan, heavily armed and ready to go once their masters let them off their leashes. And then there's the women in the burqas and often 
uh, you see a group of women and they almost become like one creature. They become kind of like a jellyfish underneath this thing. It sort of disguises their anatomy. And the sense of America, of Hollywood, of Tom Mix, uh, the American soldiers on horseback. He arrived in Afghanistan in early February. While an interim government had been installed and victory against the Taliban declared, the American bombing campaign was continuing and a US ground assault called Operation Anaconda was about to begin. For six weeks, he travelled with aid group Médecins Sans Frontières, Doctors Without Borders. This allowed him to see much of the country and speak with over a thousand ordinary Afghanis. The idea that the Taliban are off in the mountains with bin Laden is crazy. They're everywhere. I'd go into a village and I'd ask to see the police commissioner to get permission to do something. And the former Taliban police commissioner would come out and now he'd have a, a proper policeman's uniform on, but he was still a Taliban. And I know that uh, you know, he, he's been indoctrinated and believes uh, the fundamentalist philosophy. He also heard disturbing stories about the behaviour of some Northern Alliance soldiers. you just got to get outside of any of the major cities, and you go particularly to the Pashtun community, and uh, they've suffered terribly from Northern Alliance uh, uh, forces coming in and uh, un under the excuse of going in to disarm them, but actually taking things from the house and... Um, and threatening them. So there's a sense of tremendous insecurity in the country. George Gittos believes that the interim leader, Hamid Karzai, a Pashtun, doesn't have the necessary support of the Northern Alliance to keep the country unified. Meanwhile, an unhealthy cult has developed around assassinated Northern Alliance leader, Ahmed Shah Massoud. The whole time I was there and I travelled right around the country, I didn't see a single picture or poster of Karzai in any office, shop, building, airport. Everywhere there are pictures of Masood. And that's very frightening because it means that there's an incredibly powerful uh, propaganda machine representing the Northern Alliance trying to say, well, we are now the controlling force in the country. Whereas the Pashtuns, who are the majority of the country, are terrified about that because uh, they see that as absolutely opposed to Pashtun interests. So there's, there's a build-up towards civil war. You go as far as thinking civil war? I'm, I'm absolutely certain. Uh, I did not meet an intelligent person uh, in Afghanistan who didn't feel that uh, it's, it's, the country is building towards another civil war. But it was the refugee camps that shocked George Gittos the most. He visited huge camps in western Afghanistan that stretched as far as the eye could see. Hundreds of thousands of people living in sub-zero temperatures, barely with latrines, um, uh, barely with access to aid, living in little uh, like two-man tents, um, children burnt from you know, fires, there's no real firewood. Every tree, every bit of wood that can be burnt has been burnt. Um, terrible diarrhoea, pneumonia, um, malnutrition amongst the children. I can't, it's a living hell. I think uh, if you had to invent a hell, you couldn't invent one worse than what it's like in one of these refugee camps. He says it would be a mistake for the Australian government to consider repatriating any refugee to this hell. He met one family already repatriated from Pakistan with devastating consequences. I know one father who was repatriated and he was told that his home was safe. Uh, he took his children back to the house and he said, kids stay in the house, I'm going to go out and check about landmines. And the kids were just too keen. They ran off into the backyard to check to see if their swing was still there. The father was down the road checking about the landmines and he heard an explosion. And uh, one of his sons was killed and the other one's now blind. And I sat with that father, an educated man. And, um, you know, he, he'd been led to believe that it was safe to return. Driving around out of uniform... Uh, but also wearing civilian clothes 
They drive white cars. For the six weeks of his journey, he kept a diary. In it, he recorded every moment, from painful to humorous. They used a headless calf, quite big and much heavier than a goat. One event was a game of Bukashi in Mazar Sharif. Bukashi is a traditional Afghani game involving two teams of horsemen. At this match, there were two special visitors. These big, clean, highly groomed Americans stand out from the turbaned Afghans, not just because they've been given the only white plastic seats, elevating them above all the others, but because of their freshness. They have that Hollywood artificiality, as if they've just stepped out from a McDonald's with self-closing doors, air conditioning hissing behind them to find themselves like the cast of Stargate in another dimension. George Gitto says the local reaction towards the American campaign is mixed. Well, as an artist, I can say that any of these situations is full of ambiguity. People will say, say to you, we welcome the Americans back. However, uh, a lot of bad signals have gone out. For example, dropping the yellow packages of uh, food and then dropping the cluster bombs. The cluster bomb packages are the same shape and colour. They're both yellow. So that story's gone through the country and people think, well, how can you trust a country that'll do that? As well as fear and misery, George Gitto's also witnessed a celebration in one of the refugee camps. You know, there was a beautiful moment for me on this trip I uh, went up onto the top of a truck because I was at this refugee camp where there were hundreds of people. I saw this swirling and beautiful colours and uh, I heard music. So I got down off the truck and ran with some kids over to what was happening and it was a wedding and there was a girl in brightly spangled clothes and she was holding her little tin glory box above her head and dancing with it and she had all her girlfriends around and other women with tambourines and flutes and music and uh, she had makeup on and all of a sudden the air just filled with money. Her father threw money into the air. I don't know where he got the money. I mean, but that was what you do for your daughter. Everywhere I went, you know, there was this resilience of the human spirit. You'd find someone who'd actually gotten a ball bearing out of a tank and made a merry-go-round for the kids. And you'd see the laughing kids spinning around on the merry-go-round. Or you'd see uh, a wedding with people with bright dresses and music, or just kids enjoying themselves. A bit further down the road was a similar manually turned ferris wheel. The children whooped and spun like Bukashi riders as the late afternoon sun spread crazy shadows over their fathers who crouched smiling with Kalashnikovs held in their laps. Dr. Adik pointed to the guns and said, they treat them like a fashion accessory. I came close to the men with the guns sensing sometimes the truth is in the detail. The guns had all been decorated with little glittering heart-shaped stickers. Disney World Afghanistan. Perhaps this is what Picasso meant when he said, I don't seek, I find. <laughs>